Welcome to this Contact a Family webinar. Um, if there is a technical hitch, please bear with us. Um, those of you joining by PC, laptop, tablet or smartphone should now be able to see this introductory slide. My name is Catherine Ratcliffe, I'm an associate with Contact a Family and I'm joined by Louise from Rotherham Parent Care Forum who is going to help this morning. So, why do forums need a treasurer or someone responsible for their finances? It's really important that as parent forums you have processes and procedures in place to make sure that you keep control on finances, but it's really important to make sure that you are safeguarded yourselves. Lives can be stressful enough without worrying about money. It's worth mentioning that um, the whole of your committee, when I say committee I actually mean steering group or board or whatever name you give to your, your management group. Um, it, it is important that the whole of the committee has a responsibility for the money that it receives and spends. That's why you need to record all decisions taken about spending money. Louise um, will speak to us a little bit later about how decisions are approved within her forum. And I'd just like to stipulate recording uh, of those decisions within your minutes is very, very important. Right, so you've been nominated to be treasurer of your forum. So what do you need to think about? The treasurer has um, a watching brief over all aspects of financial management, working closely with other members of the forum management committee to safeguard the organization's finances and resources. It doesn't have to be just one person. You can split the role into manageable chunks. If you can't find someone to take on the role of treasurer, you can talk to your local community and voluntary service to see what help they can offer. Or you can pay someone to do the accounts and, and to take on the majority of the, that role. Or find a volunteer through your volunteer bureau. Louise, I think you've had some experience, haven't you, of involving another organisation? Yeah, I do. I mean, I look after the accounts on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I do have responsibility within the organisation. Um, but what we do, we do use accountancy services through Voluntary Action Rotherham, which is our local community and voluntary service. Um, and what they kind of do is oversee the work that I've done. So we actually pay them to, they prepare, because we're a registered charity as well we actually pay the accountant what she does is independently examine our accounts and she'll put it into a format to send to company's house for us and we do find that really useful so again this is um, through through a voluntary service known as here locally as VAR which is voluntary action Rotherham and I'm sure you all have some knowledge of your local community and voluntary service I also know that in some authorities, the CVS, do do uh, training for treasurers. So again, that could be something else that they could help you with. Right, so the uh, main role uh, responsibility of, of a forum treasurer is to oversee and present budgets, accounts and financial statements to the forum management committee to liaise with staff, if that's appropriate, about financial matters and ensure that appropriate financial systems and, and controls are in place. Ensure that record keeping and accounts meet the conditions of your funders or statutory bodies and ensure compliance with any relevant legislation. You're also 
responsible for presenting regular reports to the for on the forum's financial position and prepare those accounts for audit and liaise with your auditor, as Louise mentioned. Um, present accounts at the AGM and advise on the forum's reserves. You're responsible for banking, bookkeeping and record keeping. Um, you need to be setting up appropriate systems for bookkeeping and we'll come to that again later in the presentation and for managing and maintaining petty cash arrangements. Ensure that everyone handling money keeps proper records and documentation. You'll also um, have some responsibility around the control of fixed assets and stocks and we're going to again talk about assets later on. Ensure that proper records are kept of the purchases that you make and the equipment that you purchase from your grant monies. And ensure that um, the required insurances are in place, such as contents for items such as fixed assets. Keeping accounts and uh, bookkeeping, and it, uh, it's a, a basic. Uh, look at this. I wanted to get a tip, uh, and it, this is drawn from my experience working with forums as, as an associate. We're, we're all very busy and we may be uh, popping into the local Tesco to pick up some tea, coffee and whatever, and some nice donuts or something for a steering group meeting, and we remember that we need something ourselves or we see something that, oh, I meant to get that. Make sure that you don't put the items that you're purchasing on the same receipt. Keep your own monies separate from the money for the forum. I know that sounds pretty straightforward and, and common sense, but we are often uh, rushing about from one thing to another, and it, it can be easy to forget that and then trying to remember some months later when you're sending in your monitoring is difficult. So just always remember to keep things separate. Okay, so in my conversation with Louise, we discussed the need to be organized when dealing with money and uh, organization skills are absolutely key to good financial management. And Louise will mention something about that now. It's just about, yeah, I mean, I'm not from an accounting background. I'm not a qualified accountant. I am from an admin background, um, and so I do have organisation skills. But it's literally just about when you're getting receipts in, keep them in an orderly manner. I know I've, I've seen people visit the accountants before with bagfuls of receipts, and then however can you track all of that? I mean, at the moment, I do keep spreadsheets. Um, so once a week, possibly, I will any invoices that I've paid, I will log them all into a spreadsheet and reference them with numbers. Um, so it is literally just about being organised. You don't necessarily need to come from an accountancy background. So be methodical. Uh, keep uh, separate accounts of any restricted fundings received and of the expenditure relating to it. I know that many forums have different um, streams of income and that's what makes can make things very difficult when you're reporting back to each of the organisations who have given you some, some money to do what you do very well. Make sure that you keep a record of all fin financial transactions and always record the full amount of cash you receive or pay out. Do not hold large amounts of cash bank it as soon as possible and again when you're very busy sometimes you think oh I must go to the bank with that and you forget this webinar is very much about giving information to you about managing finances but for me one of the prime reasons is to safeguard you so try and be organized in doing things like getting cash to the bank it's really important to protect yourselves Check regularly that the cash held equals the balance in your cash book and we're going to look at that and I'm, I've given an example later on in the webinar about um, keeping a cash book. 
just again uh, reiterating the uh, responsibilities for the treasurer um, they are maintaining an account system agreed with your committee and again we Louise and I were talking and sometimes if you're the treasurer and you haven't got a meeting for another month or so and you think there's a better way of doing something make sure that you share that with with your committee at the earliest opportunity because people need to know how systems are working so make sure that the committee has agreed financial policies and procedures you need to keep the day-to-day -day financial records of income and expenditure you have a responsibility around handling petty cash and this can be a real challenge I think sometimes because um, not all parents uh, bring along their claims um, regularly to the meeting and sometimes they might hold them back for two or three months so you don't know if you've got enough cash so having a knowledge about how how the expenditure has been decided and agreed will help you to determine how much petty cash you need to have make sure that the cash and expenses are paid in line with good practice ensure that appropriate financial systems and controls are in place and that everyone who needs to know knows them ensure the use of funds meets with the conditions set by the funding bodies and again you can go on to the contact a family website the participation grant section tells you about the conditions of grant and what you can use the monies for ensure effective and timely monitoring and reporting so keep they may be fed up if you keep bringing the financial uh, reporting to the committee but keep doing it it must be a standard item on your agenda work with committee to prepare and present budgets for new or ongoing work and again we're going to talk about how the new grant application form lends itself to that budget uh, profiling in, in a much easier way than has before make sure that the committee think through the financial implications of their plans so there may be somebody who has really good ideas um, but think through um, whether or not the forum have made an application to do that piece of work uh, within the grant application and make sure you've got enough money for it you can talk to your regional advisor about any changes you may want to make it's worth having um, here he's talking about uh, ensuring that your forum sticks to the financial policy because policies are easy well, for some people they're easy to write and you've got an example financial control policy on the contact a family website make sure that you're familiar with them uh, they're not just to be to be left and never seen again um, review them regularly make sure that they're meeting the requirements of your forum and also within the policy it may uh, be worth thinking about how to buy or purchase goods and services and making sure that your forum adheres to good practice and it's not seen to be purchasing goods or services just from friends and family those with other interests who may be in the forum without having gone through due process now many um, people I'm sure will have had experience of being a member of a school governing body and therefore you'll know that it's worth having a standing item on every committee or steering group about the declaration of personal interests because in truth your uh, brother or whoever or sister may be the best electrician and uh, in town and it will be better for the forum to use them for something that you're doing but make sure that that is clearly logged within your minutes that you've chosen this provider and um, again just to say that Louise is going to mention to us later about the stepped process about um, spending money within her forum okay so set up a basic record keeping system 
Uh, there are um, different types of accounts and different ways of recording. Um, there are manual records using a cash book and, and to rec record income and expenditure. There are a number of electronic record keeping systems now uh, using either a spreadsheet or a ready-made accounts package. And again, we're very fortunate that Louise has just um, been on a webinar for QuickBooks Pro um, to help them manage their finances and she's going to share that with us and I think this will be quite helpful because it will also tell you about the cost implications of that. Yeah, I mean, I think as a forum, we've gone through the whole range of things. Obviously, when we started with just the one grant, we did use to keep manual records. Um, as other funding streams have come on board, then we moved on to spreadsheets. Um, and other forums actually lucky enough that we have quite a lot of funding streams now. And as Treasury, it's, it is becoming increasingly difficult to manage that just using spreadsheets. Um, so I did contact our accountant. As I said, we use our local community and voluntary service, which is Voluntary Action Rotherham. And I asked for some advice about that. And she's um, she told me about QuickBooks. Um, and so I've had a look at it. I went on a webinar just this week, which was really, really useful. It did last three and a half hours, but so it was really, really thorough. Um, but it was, it, and it, it does look very simple to use. So we are going to go with it. I think it will make our processes a lot easier. Um, speaking to when I spoke to our accountant about it, there's actually three different levels of QuickBooks Pro that you can purchase. It's actually another benefit of it is that it's cloud computing, so it's something that you log on to. Um, so obviously you can never lose records. If you if you are using spreadsheets, there's a chance that something could happen to your computer, and if it's not backed up, you could lose everything. So that's another advantage of it. Um, obviously, because it's cloud, you can have multiple users that can log on. Um, you can set different levels for different users as to what they can actually do. Um, so the package that we've gone for it is the top package, and it's going to cost us £15 a month. So I don't think it's astronomical, considering probably how much time it's going to save me in using that. Um, within that as well, you can do your fund accounting, so you can allocate different spends to different funds. It does budgets for you. Uh, once you've entered all the information, it will update budgets. Um, you can also grant access to other users who can, they can't actually change anything, but they can log in and look at information. So what I've done, what, um, I've sent an invite out to all our board of trustees, and at any time they can log on and have a look at the financial position of the organisation. They can pull off a whole range of management reports, um, but they, they're restricted in what they can do. They can't change anything, they can't alter any transactions, they can't enter any data. Um, so yeah, it sounds like a bit of a sale pitch here for QuickBooks Pro, but I, 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 do, think, well, I do think it's going to be really, really useful for us, so we are going to go ahead with it. Can you say something about how it also will create the report for the for your charities report as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if anybody's VAT registered as well, but you can do VAT returns as well. It literally is just this amazing piece of software that can do everything for you. Um, our accountant has access as well. Um, so when she's doing the independent examination of our account, she can pull everything off as well. She can log in at any time and check everything. So it kind of just streamlines the whole process and she will pull off, rather than me having to visit my accountant with all the spreadsheets and all my invoices, I think you can even scan and attach copy invoices onto it as well, onto each transaction. Mm -hmm. So literally the accountant can log in remotely from our office and just access all our information to do what she needs to do and to produce the accounts for Companies House and the Charity Commission as well. I mean that's an example of a, for me, of a very good system uh, and I can just confirm that I did get Louise to sign a declaration of per, uh, personal interest because <laughs> she did a good sales pitch there. She has no connection to I don't work Pro. <laughs> but I'm sure that's helpful information and I know the cost of that uh, was a, a useful in piece of information for forums to consider. Thanks Louise. So we talked about being organised earlier on, um, about the things that you need to have um, to be able to, to uh, reconcile your, your funding. So there is a list of uh, things that you need to uh, be able to complete your cash book and you'll need to collect and hold on to these sorts of, of things. 
Okay, the bank reconciliation. The bank statement provides a regular opportunity to check your records against those of the bank and deal with any mistakes. And they do happen, mistakes do happen. So do, um, I think we're all guilty, at, well, I'll speak for myself, guilty of getting a bank statement and sometimes and not going through it with uh, the accuracy I should go through it with. But this is money that you're handling on behalf of, of uh, other people. So try and be vigilant in, in checking things off. Check off each item on the bank statement and take into account any checks or last minute deposits which do not uh, appear as yet on your statement. It is usual to present the bank reconciliation together with the statement of income and expenditure at your committee meetings. Uh, this is about checks and, and balances. Um, most of your financial control policies make reference to the fact that anyone signing a check should not be the payee. Um, so be very, very careful of that, of signing a check to pay money to yourself. You just should not do it. Louise, have you got anything else you want to add into this section? Uh, I think we're kind of spot. It's just about, really, if, if you look at the financial policy that your organisation has in place, I think that is just vitally important. And as you say, it's about it's about protecting the organisation, but it's about protecting yourself as well as the person that's responsible for finances. So for example, within our policy, we set limits as to what I can pay without seeking someone else's approval. I think in our policy we have it's a hundred pound. I can't pay anything over a hundred pound without getting a second person to sign it and approve that. Um, and I, it's about two people signing for checks. It's just about ensuring that you, you have everything to protect all parties in your finance policy and you ensure that you adhere to that. As long as you're adhering to all the rules that's in that policy then you protect, you're protecting yourself as, as the person that does have the responsibility for the finances. Okay, um, so you, you've got some places internally where you can uh, check your, your controls. So you've got your budget and you have your um, budget profiling, um, your bank orders, Authorization of expenditure, petty cash, audits from independent. The list there is not exhaustive, but it's the places where you will be be able to find you have an area, an element of control and check. Um, yes, the um. Budget is a forward uh, a plan forward plan for work and services. So profiling your budget helps you determine what work and what services you can um, become involved in. Again, we mentioned earlier, and, and Louise and I have talked about this, how the new grant application form lends itself to devising a clear action plan uh, and aids your budget planning. So I with some forums that I've been working with in recent uh, months have taken their grant application and literally uh, copied and pasted onto an action plan what it is that they've said they want to do with their grant money and the the actions that they'll uh, carry out to, to do that and also profiled in the budget, so the actions that they're going to do, how much will that cost, what resources are required in order to do that. Um, again, Louise and I were talking earlier on and then said the way I'm, I make it easier, I think, I hope, is to colour code those actions. So when I copy and paste from uh, the grant application, I do it in various colours. So when you've purchased something for um, an action that you're going to carry out, you can either put a, a particular sticker or you can mark that um, invoice in a certain colour and you know that everything you've done relates to that colour. Um, 
Louise, you were talking about how you number. Yeah, I do it a little bit differently. Obviously, as you said, when you do your grant application, you've kind of set your budget there. So, for example, if you've said if you put five hundred pounds for office supplies, you put so much money in for rent. As I log my invoices into my spreadsheet, which I do at the moment, I will log the invoice that I've paid. I'll number it. Um, and I'll allocate it to whichever class, so I'll give it a number and allocate it to stationery. Then at the end of the year, this helps with your monitoring as well, because what you can do, if you've then got your spreadsheet, you can sort it by classes of spend, and you've already got all your numbers there. Then once you're submitting everything through to contact a family, your spreadsheet's there with all your numbers, and that number is also written on your invoice, so it should all match and tally together. And that's that's how I submit my monitoring. It's not a great big job at the end of the year because yeah. you've kind of already done it as you were working through. And again, we come back to this all sounds quite simple, providing you are organised and methodical about how you go about things. Okay, this is a sample of of, ca of a cash book purchase and, and expenses. And you can see here we have the date of the uh, action and different methods of paying. So we've got here on the 1st of September, um, we have some stationery from Still Stationery and it costs £65.66 and that was paid by a cheque and the cheque number is entered just along there. Um, on the 5th of the 9th, uh, there's some parental expenses and they were for £14.34 and they were paid in cash from the Petty Cash and that's being numbered in Louise's way um, by a, a number at the top of the expenses claim form. On the 7th of the 9th we've had an event and we've got ZB Catering and that we, they cost £62 and it was paid on a debit card. Debit cards we're going to touch on later in the presentation. So the cash book summary reconciles the totals from the cash book purchases and expenses and it helps you to check what your opening and closing balances are and helps you, you monitor how your forum finances are looking. On this next slide, um, we have um, how to reach your closing balances. So. In bracket A, the opening cash balance, and in brackets B, the cash receipts, cash banked in C, cash payments in D, and closing cash balances in E. So to reach the closing cash balances in E, the calculation is add A and B together then take away the sum of C and D together and that will give you E. To reach close, the closing check account, I, at the bottom there of the, the page, the calculation is F and G minus H. The closing cash balance E should always equal the cash in hand. If it doesn't do that, then there will be a discrepancy and you should investigate what that discrepancy is. It could be that you've got an unentered receipt or payment. The closing check account balance I should always equal the balance on the bank statement at the close of business on the same day as the check account is made up to after allowing, of course, for unpresented check bank, checks or banking. That explanation is there for you. I'll just give you a minute um, to have a look at that. So um, we're going to move on to online and phone banking. 
I think it's probably more popular now to move on to the people who've moved on to internet banking, but some people still do use phone banking. For phone banking, uh, you should be solely for checking transactions. And internet banking is conduct should be conducted by the treasurer in the presence of another signatory or trustee or director, if possible. All transactions completed via internet banking, once completed, should be recorded and reported back to the forum steering committee at the monthly meeting. Any large transactions above an amount, and that amount needs to be agreed by the forum, should be witnessed by another person within the steering group. Again, some forums are moving to the use of debit cards. The use of debit cards by forums should be governed by the financial control policy. So again, make sure that it's in there. And the following are offered, uh, points are offered as guidance. Um, the steering group may authorise the, that there are two card holders following the elections at the AGM. The debit cards will be issued by your bank. Each card should be stored in a safe place when not in use. The PIN number, the personal identification number for each card should be known by the card holder only and not disclosed to anyone else or written down anywhere. In the event of loss of the PIN number, the bank would be able to provide the cardholders with the information about what to do. Should the card holder, should the card, sorry, be lost or stolen, the loss shall be reported by the cardholder to the issuing bank, the police, and the forum treasurer immediately. Should misuse be suspected, the bank should be informed immediately so that a, appropriate action can be taken. Please inform your uh, parent participation advisor as soon as possible because they've got responsibility to the DFE to ensure that funds are spent as agreed in the grant application. The debit card may only be used for purchase up to, again, an agreed amount um, with, the, with the committee. Louise, you've got um, a stepped approach to agreeing spend, haven't you? We do. We don't actually use debit cards. Um, it is written into our policy, though, and what we use is a rule. It applies to everything, whether it be check, whether it be debit cards, whether it be cash. And it's just about setting levels as, as to what you can spend up to and the authorization that's required with regards to that. Um, I think, as I said earlier, up to £100, I can pay transactions, I can I, up to that value, and it's about then setting another level, is, the, is there a point at where so many trustees need to agree that you can spend that or that you can, it, it's just about really having those checks in place in your finance policy and, and ensuring that you don't do anything against what's written in there to protect yourself. But as I said, we don't use debit cards, but if it is written in that policy and that keeps you safe in doing that and in using that, then obviously it's fine to use them, but our forum personally did decide against it. Yeah. And again, that's uh, an important point about uh, having a policy that you keep looking at and reviewing. Um, your, policy, your financial policy should have a review date on the bottom, um, and you should make sure that you do review it by the date uh, that you've said that you will. More on, on uh, debit cards. The debit card transaction should be entered in the accounts as soon as possible with the debit card authorization number to ensure the completeness of the accounting record and should be ready to so that you can reconcile it with the bank statement when it gets to the forum. All transactions must be supported by the original receipts and authorized by the designated signatory. So although you're doing that without checks, you've still got that authorization. The card um, should never ever be used for personal expenditure under any circumstances. 
um, you just make sure that that never happens. Any monthly contracts taken out against a debit card will be by prior committee consent with all the original documentation being held in the forum. Never withdraw cash um, with, with a debit card. There's a lot on debit cards because it, it is um, because you, you're not dealing with as much paper and um, it, the recording of activity in debit cards is very important. All authorised cardholders shall sign to accept that they have personal responsibility for transactions on their card which are conducted with the approval of the forum in accordance with its policy. And that's similar really to signing uh, around the, the code of conduct so that you make sure that people are aware of those responsibilities in respect of uh, handling a, a debit card. Cardholders shall also authorise the forum to recover the cost of any unauthorised transactions and where reimbursement is not received, then the forum may take steps to recover the cost from the cardholder. So again, making sure that that is clear uh, and, and written down. Cardholders shall be made aware of the action to take in the event of the card being stolen, lost or missing. So you can see here we have uh, a need emerging for the forum to have very, very clear guidance um, to support the use of debit cards and again to safeguard forum uh, committee members. Uh, we mentioned earlier the assets register, so we're going to have a look at what is an assets register and why they're used and how, uh, how do they help the forum. There is an example here of, of an asset register, but I think it's worth noting that you should have doc documented either in your terms of reference or constitution how you will dispose of assets should the forum be dissolved. Also bear in mind that items purchased for participation work from your DFE grant should be transferred to any new forum that is, is established for parent participation. For example, laptops that are purchased, iPads, phones, and please note any vouchers held from one grant year to another should also be listed in an asset register. So there you have a South Town Forum asset register um, and it's to facilitate and record the physical control and security of assets. I mean, if you're buying something like a, a laptop or a, a, an iPad or phones, they're, they're worth quite a bit of money. So you need to have a, a register of them and know who's got them and using them. Often you'll see in other organisations for the purpose of, a, of assets that they have, a code, they have a little sticker on them with a code number on them so that that is registered within the asset register. Now, oh, any property or vehicles, um, we appreciate that the grant doesn't actually run to um, a nice little um, Audi A1 or anything, but um, sometimes these sorts of things can be donated to forums for, for the purpose of their business. Equipment of all items with purchase prices inclusive of VAT of £250 more, but you, your forum may decide that other items of less value also need to be recorded. Um, I know working with one forum, they thought I was um, a little crazy mentioning some of the uh, thermos pots that they bought, but they'd spent quite a bit of money on them and they were items bought out of the grant for the use of parent participation. They are coming out of that grant and what we don't want is a new forum uh, having to be established and, and then using the next grant money to buy the equipment that's already been purchased previously. So you may um, choose to allocate uh, the task of keeping an, an asset registered to the treasurer or somebody else. Um, so it's, uh, as I've mentioned, it's worth having a number a description of what the item is, um, 
you don't need to put the colour of the car, but you know the description will be good. Um, who supplied it and the date that you purchased it, and the cost, inclusive of, of inclusive of VAT, and again, who's got it? Who's got the iPad? Who's got the phone? Who's got the laptop? Your forum may also wish to have a formal agreement that members sign when they take responsibility for for items. Um, where where they are, uh, sometimes um, items are are um, being used by a committee member, and then something happens within their personal life. They're not able to be a member of the steering group, and um, they life is busy and they forget to return the item. But so you need to know where they are, and you need to tell them what they need to do to return it. Uh, and that's, this can save a lot of angst later on. So, what if another organisation signs the conditions of grant and looks after your money? Um, they then take on the responsibility for ensuring the grant is spent in line with the application and for reporting back. But I must emphasise this, that forums and steering groups um, should be directing how the money is spent and they must be provided with regular up updates from the organization and how the money is being used and that it is in line with what you said you would um, spend your grant on. So the management committee of the forum usually has responsibility for the financial affairs or for determining and keeping track of how the grant monies are spent. Someone has to sign the conditions of grant form um, for the grant application. But remember what we said at the very outset, the whole of the committee has responsibility for that grant. It is a requirement of the Department for Education grant funding for forums that you have a financial control policy outlining financial management systems, procedures and internal controls to minimise that risk to forums. Uh, accruals and prepayments are items which you expect to pay for or receive after the end of the month or financial year and prepayments are the items you have had to pay in advance of the next month or financial year. But please note the DFE grant is your only, if it's your only funding, prepaying could be an issue if the payment is anticipated to be in the next year's grant. So, getting help and support, as we've mentioned before, your uh, local community voluntary action um, or your, your local development agency. Use your parent participation advisor. They're there and, and will help you whenever they can. Um, find a volunteer through your local volunteer bureau. Lots of people who probably are unable to work now but have all the skills that you need may have uh, offered themselves to an organisation like yours through your local volunteer bureau. Lots of skilled people offer their services to organisations like parent forums. Please um, just, just check. Um, you may want to um, use a, a local accountant or there may be somebody within your, your forum. Right, get ready for the next slide. <laughs> Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Yeah, it sounds scary, all of this, but you just need to be organised and methodical, as we said before. Um, there are people and, and organisations that can assist you, and indeed you may choose to use some of your grant to pay for an accountant or someone with financial skills who can help and that's acceptable within the terms and conditions of the grant and you, again you can find that information on the participation grant website. Don't struggle in silence, if you're worried talk to your advisor.
and believe it or believe it not, it's a great way of being a treasure to develop new uh, skills, to strengthen your existing skills, and you can make, make a huge difference to a forum uh, by, by being the treasurer. Louise, have you got anything you want to add into this? I just think, it, it, just to reiterate what you said previously, it can be quite scary and there's no getting away from the fact that it is quite a responsibility managing the finances of the organisation. But like I did, where, where I found I was in a position where it was becoming a little bit unmanageable and I was struggling a little bit, that's when I approached our local, as I said, I approached Voluntary Action Rotherham and they offered um, lots of help and support and and it is just about if you do find that you're struggling, as you said, Kath, don't struggle in silence. There are people, you know, who can help you. And I think, I mean, obviously I'm a parent of a child with a disability and I gave up work. I, I was an administration and credit control manager for a number of years and I gave up work to become his carer. Then I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to get involved with Rotherham Parent Carer Forum. Uh, and I think it doing the role that I do and managing the fans, I think it's given me a little bit of confidence back now. Um, so yeah, obviously I did have some skills. I didn't have the skills of an accountant or a bookkeeper or, but yeah, I do feel that I have like brushed my skills up now and, and, and there are people that can help me through it. And, and as long as I said that you adhere to your finance policy and you're not doing anything that you shouldn't be doing, um, then yeah, I think it's a really rewarding thing to do. Thank you, Louise. So um, we, we've had some questions uh, passed to us. We're just going to have a, a quick look at them. But um, sorry about that. Technical hitch, I think. <laughs> But anyway, it does say, um, thank you for attending, <laughs> definitely a technical bit. <laughs> thank you for, for attending and, and joining the webinar today, and I hope that it's been really helpful to you, and more importantly, please be assured that you can ask for help, and that you're not alone uh, with these challenges, and I think I, it would be very remiss of me not to thank Louise for helping me and giving a uh, a perspective from uh, a parent forum point of view. So thank you for for that, Louise. The benefit is she lives just over the road, I think. <laughs> but thank you very much. We're going to have a look at the questions now, and we'll try and answer some of them. Some of them, uh, I'm just having a cursory glance and look right at my street. But uh, just bear with me a minute. Um, somebody has asked, what should you do if someone asks you to pay expenses that you don't think are appropriate? Very good question, this. Um, again, um, I uh, have experience where a forum uh, committee member went off on a quite an expensive course that had not been agreed within the forum. So I remember it was, it was expensive. Make sure that you've agreed um, to pay a particular expense um, and if you don't think that they're appropriate don't pay them ask them for the proof where it was agreed um, and make sure that you do do challenge do ask the questions um, you know you, you're putting yourself at risk if you just overlook these sorts of things and and pay them what the next question is what do you do if you need to discuss paying remuneration or salaries at a committee when some of the committee have a vested interest in this we talked earlier about um, a declaration of personal interest um, get your declaration of personal interest on the as a standing item on each of the committee meetings um, your remuneration policy should be very clear about what it is that will be paid for, how you pay. If it's something out of the ordinary, as I say, get that agreed um, at, at the um, at the committee meeting. Um, okay. 
the next question is what do you do if you have concerns that the forum committee want to spend money on something that is outside of the grant? <gasps> right. Um, the grant, the conditions of grant are, are clear. I would print off a copy of the conditions of grant and make sure that they read it. If they have applied to do something and want to change their mind, they have to speak to the advisor for a variation. Uh, and somebody is asking here about what can we do if we haven't agreed a variation but realize when we do our grant monitoring that we have spent too much on a particular budget heading. Talk to your advisor. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't know what would happen about that because every situation is different but talk immediately to your advisor about it and about why you change your mind and how this happened. Uh, this, this came up once before when we did the webinar about financial control. What do you do to pay your expenses when you only have, have sorry, have you, um, so you've only got one check signatory um, so that you, you as the treasurer uh, maybe um, need to claim some money and you're the only signatory on the account. There must be other people in your forum who can be signatories. Don't put yourself in that position of signing it, signing a cheque for yourself. That's really um, difficult. Some, you must have a chair or somebody else who has to take some responsibility for this. We do have written into our finance policy that there must be a minimum of three cheque signatories um, so that obviously resolves that situation because there's always two other people, you know, to sign a cheque. So we have written into our policy that there must be a minimum of three people that can sign cheques. Um, another one is what can we do if our treasurer is sick for a long time or we haven't got one? Um, again, I think it's a, a, what we said is about looking to another organisation that can help you even in the interim. Uh, this is one for you, Louise. Where can I find information about QuickBooks online training and was it free? Yes, as I said, I did it through Voluntary Action Rotherham, which is our accountancy service. I think there are many accountants registered. Um, and, and what she did, when I, I had, she gave me a demo of QuickBooks, um, once I had a look at it and decided that I wanted to go ahead, um, then she actually registered me for the webinar and a link just came through. I think you can purchase the package yourself. Um, I can't think off the top of my head what the web link is, but there is a website that you can go and have a look at. So possibly if we can find that link yes, and share that it, later. Put it on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can. You can the, the way I did it was through our accountant. Uh, someone asking about over what time period should you depreciate a capital asset? I'm not sure because that would be different for, from for various things. So they've given an exact. The person has, asking the question has said computers normally write off over 12 months. Oh, don't they? Um, uh, I think you would be able to get the value of of, a, of an asset updated. So if you had a, a an asset register, and I'm, I have to say I'm thinking off the top of my head here, but if you have a an asset register, it may be that in two years down the line, you may want to update the value of that within your asset register. But just an idea. Um, somebody's asking, should the treasurer always be a signatory of the check? I think we said in one of the slides where if it's if it's possible that you've got enough signatories without the treasurer that would probably be your best practice but as we know from experience a number of forums struggle with getting three signatories so it can be a problem and therefore it may have to be that the treasurer is a signatory on the check. Right, so there's a question here. How do I divide the expenditure if we are holding an event that is being part paid from several budgets? Well, obviously for DFE purposes, when you're monitoring that grant, the, the only the proportion that you've allocated from the DFE grant, what I do, I'll write on the invoice. When I pay the invoice, I'll write on the invoice, say it was an invoice for £500 and only £100 of it have come out of the DFE grant, I would clearly write 
on the top of the invoice when I'm sending it in for monitoring purpose that I am only claiming a hundred pound out of this grant. Obviously, when you're accounted and the way that you split your funds, then you just split that invoice across your different funders. I'm not sure I've answered that. Really yeah, I well, think you but... have. Yeah, and I've seen that on um, some monitoring invoices where people have written that it is from different funding streams. Yeah. No more questions, uh, but do feel, if you think about something uh, later on, um, please feel free to send in your question and we'll try to, to answer it. Um, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Thank you.